What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to Google Licious for everything inside the world of Google. And unfortunately, we start off with one of the biggest fails we've ever seen in consumer electronics with the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Now, I called it the best phone of 2016, and it really was until, you know, things went kaboom. And then it went kablooey. Again. Now, Samsung has completely halted production of the Note 7, and they even started shipping out Note 7 return kits last week that included gloves and were made of fireproof packaging. According to Apptelligent, there are still over 1 million Galaxy Note 7s still in use right now. So, if you're one of those people, please just give it up because denial isn't just a river in Egypt. Plus, Sammy's making an effort to persuade people to remain loyal to the brand by offering a $100 credit for anyone that is exchanging their device for another Samsung phone. Now, people who exchange it at a carrier store for a different brand phone get a $25 credit. And they know this is as bad as it can get, but hey, you know, at least they're trying. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, initial costs from the Note 7 debacle have completely wiped Samsung's $2.3 billion of projected mobile profits for the quarter, with the whole being as large as $3 billion. We've talked in the past about Samsung's rush to get out the Note 7 to take advantage of a lackluster iPhone release this year, except it literally blew up in their face. But what was really behind this? According to reports and breakdowns, the Note 7's design exerted undue pressure on its battery packs, which in turn resulted in the negative and positive poles to come into contact and voila, the smoke. And you know where there's smoke, there's fire. Plus, Samsung's SDI batteries proved to be too big for a design that was trying to be as slim as possible while also being waterproof. When they went for replacement batteries from China's ATL, the second time around, even that didn't fix the problem. Now, the Note 7's design was also tightly sealed, not by screws, but by glue that held it all together, so they couldn't even tell customers to remove the battery because it was glued down. An iFixit teardown even shows taking it apart was not an easy task. So. So much for the best phone of 2016. But what are some of the alternatives out there for you right now? Well, if you're a Samsung person, you can always get that $100 back and go for an S7 Edge. It's the easiest phone to transition to. You won't lose anything from a spec standpoint, but you'll miss the S Pen bigger screen and USB-C. Now, this might seem like you're going backwards, but if you're all about the S Pen, the Note 5 is the closest thing to the Note 7's functionality. Maybe Samsung even brings a software upgrade to bring some of the new features to the 5. But the Android phone I'm most excited about is the Pixel, and in this case, we'll go large with the Pixel XL. It's a great big screen alternative with the pure Android Nougat and the Google Assistant coming October 20th. Other great alternatives include its Korean rival and the LG V20. That's a spec beast with a 5.7 inch screen and a removable battery to boast. That's coming out October 28th. And the OnePlus 3 is a feature packed 5.5 inch AMOLED display phone. It's half the price at $399 and comes packed with a whopping six gigs of RAM. And, you know, if you're willing to finally switch over to the fruity side, the iPhone 7 Plus is another big screen gem that deserves your attention if you're fed up and, you know, ready to go Apple. Or you can just wait for the Samsung Galaxy S8. Yep, the rumors are already out there, and Sam Mobile reports that we could see two Galaxy S8 variants. One is rumored to feature a 2K 5.1 inch curved Super AMOLED display, while the other will have a 5.5 inch 4K display. It will come equipped with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 830 processor or Samsung's own Exynos 8895. A dual camera lens system will be exclusive to the larger screen phone and the Viv Artificial Intelligence Assistant that Samsung recently acquired from Viv Labs will replace S Voice. The guess is that we'll see it launch at Mobile World Congress in February of 2017, which honestly isn't even that far away. And in Google News, two new commercials featuring the first made by Google Pixel phone have arrived, showing a search bar morph into the shape of their new flagship phone. The phone is already completely sold out on the Play Store, except for the very silver and quite black 5-inch models with 32 gigs. Really blue sold out in just a couple days, which left some of you really blue. Also, the phones are expected to ship October the 20th, and I have one coming my way. And taking a page from what they've learned working on both hardware and software, Evan Blast reports that the Google-made smartwatch is running the next version of Android 2.0 will be delayed into the first quarter of 2017. There hasn't been much news recently, but two devices are still in the works that support swappable bands. The slimmer 42mm watch codenamed Swordfish features a single button interface and gets rid of the flat tire design. Now, the more advanced of the two watches, codenamed Angelfish, will feature LTE and GPS and allow the watch to work as a standalone device that does not require a phone. It also includes a heart rate sensor and a three-button design. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can always email me at googlelicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googlelicious. Googlelicious.